You're watching superscom.com. I'm Carlos Reale, and here I am with Graves' own Ola. Um, thank you for giving us a little bit of your time, man, letting us bug you with a few questions. Um, sixth time in the U.S. as far as touring it. Pretty successful touring career over here. We appreciate it, of course, as well. Yeah. This tour, you're doing probably the most dates of any other tour. You've been going to a lot of different places. Yeah. You're coming here, which is, thank you so much. Glad to see the band making it over here. Um, you're touring with Morbid Angel again in Dark Funeral. Yep. Morbid Angel, you toured back then in 1992 with them. Yep. So basically, how's this tour been compared to the previous ones and the general impressions so far? It's been, uh, it's been really good actually. It's, uh, it's a really good package. Uh, everybody kind of knows each other from earlier on, so it's very, very easy, very uh, family kind of feeling, I think. And uh, just, just good shows all in all and everything's very easy actually. The fan reaction this time around in this tour? Very good, I'd, I'd say. We do uh, trying to focus on the new album, uh, of course, and uh, also do some of the classics. Uh, we have somewhat limited time. Uh, I think we do about 45 minutes or so, but uh, we always we try to do a good balance in the, in the set list. In 28 years of musical career for Grave, and you're here, like you said, promoting the latest album, uh, basically can you tell us a little bit about the concept behind the new album, the recording process, the fan reception yeah. for the live stuff? We, uh, we, we wrote the whole thing uh, pretty quick, I'd say, in like two months, uh, late last year. Uh, wanted to do something like very old school, uh, but still keep it like freshly sounding. And uh, we have a couple of new guys in the band which contributed a lot to the writing process as well, which is very cool. Uh, so it's definitely not a, a one-man job at all. It's a, it's very much a band effort. Uh, recorded it in in our own studio we have uh, called Studio Solace. I did the mixing and the mastering and everything, and uh, it's just been uh, I'm I'm blown away by the reactions for it. I mean I, I I know it's a good album. I feel very good about it, but it's been very 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 well received and uh, from fans and Senshimita is also pushing it really good because they they believe in the album and they like it so. And you're back with Century Media. That's your first release. How, how's that uh, relationship working so far? It's very good. I mean, it's uh, we did seven albums for them. Uh, then we did two two with Regain Records just to see kind of what else was out there and an, another side of it. And uh, once we were out of that contract, uh, we shopped around. Uh, we had a handful of offers, and it's just easy to go back to Century Media. I know most of the people there for some of them for 20 years, and. Uh, it's a big organization, and they, they do really good work, so it was not a, not a hard decision, really. And, like you said, you've been involved in the recording and the mixing and the producing side of it for at least, you know, three of the last four albums just yeah. by your hand alone. But you used to, you had Thomas, of course, doing the first albums. You had Peter Tactrin as well. What made you decide to take this type of role uh, in the band as far as producing the material, recording and mixing it and the difference between you doing it and and Peter being on board or Thomas. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's just something I really enjoy doing. Uh, I built a brand new studio in Stockholm this year. Uh, some um, I already have some offers for doing mixes and some mastering work for other bands. And it's uh, it's kind of the plan to, to have that in between tours and do, do studio work as well. Uh, the biggest differences I would say is uh, it's a very easy process to record like that. You don't have a pressure every day that's costing you money, really. Uh, we can take days off if we want, if we're getting burned out or whatever. We just take some days off and pick it up where we left off. And The only deadline we have is the deadline to deliver the master to the, to the label. And we can pretty much spend as much or as little time as we want on it. So, so you, want, you want to give Peter a run for his money, too? <laughs> sure, I'll do that. <laughs> little competition never hurts, right? Yeah. Um, you guys are pioneers as far as the Swedish death metal scene, if you will, along with Entomb and Dismember. We're sad to hear Dismember is no longer active as of last year. 
but you've also inspired many of the newer bands, whether it's melodic death metal, where you know it's arch enemy, hypocrisy itself, many of the the, the very famous acts right now within the metal community. Yeah. What is your personal opinion about this Swedish, specifically the Swedish death metal scene right now, and how do you see it pretty much advancing the genre or the subgenre, and how is it perceived internationally, in your opinion? I think it's uh, it's got a, a very good reputation still. Uh, it's a lot of newer bands, as you mentioned, all, a lot of the newer melodic bands, but there's also like a second generation of bands coming up that, that want to play like the old school kind of death metal that we do. And uh, the, there's a bunch of them. Uh, a lot of them open up for us when we do lo local shows or lo uh, shows in Sweden. And I mean, they're they may, might be like 20 or 22 years old, but they're actually really, really good. And I mean, these days, it's uh, I think everybody has an advantage, uh, mostly for the recording parts, because a lot of those bands do their own demos and all this stuff, and uh, don't really have to be signed to get stuff out there that sounds really good. And and that also helps with perceiving it in a better way than a crappy, you know, cassette demo tape. You know, luckily we got signed on those, but you know. It, take, it takes a little bit more these days when there's so much more competition, I think. And so many more opportunities. Like you say, yeah. technology-based, yeah. you can do a lot right now with less time, less budget, so that works as well. Yeah. Um, in the future or right now, any side projects in the works for you, specific? Uh, I have my, my own uh, solo project called Grey Heavens, which I'm doing. It's more of a black, kind of black, thrashy death metal thing. Uh, gonna record some stuff later on. I have uh, Norman Lonhard from Trypticon. He's gonna come up to the studio and do some drums for it. And uh, it's pretty much all I have time for at this moment. Uh, there's some other stuff, but nothing really serious at this point. And you know, the new release just dropped about a month ago, a month and a half ago almost. Um, but we still have to ask for the fans, of course. Yeah. Future plans for Grave, what are they? More touring, you got festivals coming up. Actually, the, probably the summer here just happened and yeah. summer festivals are over, but any other touring news that you have for the fans? What are the future plans? You're already writing? <laughs> we're uh, we're just, uh, really trying to do as much shows as possible for this album. Uh, we did two weeks in Europe just before this, so it's a it's an almost an eight week stretch for us all in all. Uh, have couple of shows in, uh, in Europe during November then I think December won't happen anything uh, definitely plan to get over here again before next summer uh, possibly do a headline run if, if possible and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can come up with some ideas and uh, and we also need to do more extensive stuff for for Europe of course and summer festivals are already being booked for next summer in Europe so we already have uh, like a handful booked already so there's it's looking looking bright for sure. So a lot of touring coming up, basically. Well, we like to end uh, this as usual. If you know your fans are listening to anything you want to say to them, go ahead. Just uh, a huge thanks for everyone, uh, to everyone for supporting the band throughout all these years. Uh, we're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing it for you guys, of course. As long as you are interested in our music and coming to our shows, we'll keep doing it pretty much. So. Ola, yeah. thank you so much, man. We appreciate your time. Great luck with the rest of the tour, and we can't wait to see you live today over here.